Well, before we jump into today's vlog, there's uh, a couple of these bolts or hardwares that are just super ugly underneath the GTR that I've been wanting to change out for a long time. But luckily, at Driven Calgary, we ran into Al that owns TI Burnt. And he hooked us up with some of these mm, sweet looking titanium hardware. Couple of bolts, couple of nuts, and uh, these are look sick. So I've been wanting to change out these really janky looking, ugly looking standard bolts and nuts that come with the uh, GTRs. Uh, factory uh, brace here and the strut tower uh, bolts. So I want to switch those out. I'll tell you guys, these look nice and they're they're pretty light too. Like uh, they are titanium, so what uh, what what do I expect? They are super light. So much nicer, makes a huge difference on these old ass ugly things. And look how much cleaner that looks, guys. Okay, let's get right into the main vlog, you guys. So last week, during the trip to Calgary, the GTR wasn't going into full boost. I knew there was something wrong. Thankfully, I got a whole bunch of gauges on the Cobb uh, access port here. Normally, in full boost, I'm getting about roughly between anywhere from 80 to 90 PSI of fuel. And we were only getting 60, and I knew something was wrong. I know it has something to do with the uh, check valve that I put in last year. It's a little too big, and it's basically kinking the fuel line. And that's what causes it to not give us enough fuel when I need it. Uh, the only time it have, I guess, it, the symptoms of rise is when the fuel gets really warm, and I think the fuel line gets a little uh, jelloey or more bendable, and it creates the kink. Uh, let me show you uh, what I'm talking about. All right, so I have it all apart here. So in here, it's, it's hard to show you guys, but in here, uh, to get this check valve in, uh, I am being a little too long, and it ends up kinking right about here. And it goes from like, uh, like a 60 to a 45 is, is what, the easiest way to explain it. But let me pull it out of there, and let me see if I can fix it. There we go. Let me take that out. See how big that is? That's what's causing it to uh, kink down over here. So just let me just continue pulling everything out of here and we'll see it out in, in the open. All right, so the problem that we're running into, these are pretty much the similar girth wise, but Radium Engineering made it so that it's a universal kit. So it's a dash eight to a dash six. So it ends up making it a lot longer. So what I did was I just went with the Power uh, Performance World uh, dash six check valve. So that should make it get rid of some of this stuff so that it does uh, just not as long. So hopefully that solves the issue of, because uh, uh, we're dealing with a lot of, uh, a really tight space and there's not a lot of real estate to work with. So every little bit of, uh, I guess, size does help. So hopefully reducing this much or getting rid of all this will help it uh, gain some real estate in here you guys all right i'm not gonna lie you guys something like that shouldn't take that long it's pretty should be pretty simple but I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you it took me over half an hour to 40 minutes to get it all in and it was just basically rerouting things just to make it all work so it's not all kinked up and everything but finally i got it all in and uh, i'll show you how i did it so it looks like that is the final product so that's the uh, check valve going the right direction hopefully, um, the return line. So everything is not all kinked up anymore now. So hopefully when it gets warm, basically it doesn't get all kinked. So cross my fingers, you guys, that it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up now and make sure there's nothing leaking. Hopefully everything goes well. All right, so we, <laughs> so we ran into a kind of a snag. Car just would not fire up. It just kept on turning over and over and over and over and over and just, or sorry, just, Kept on cranking and cranking and cranking and just would not turn over. I checked everything and I thought the check valve was like maybe printed wrong. It was going the wrong way. So I swat, I switched that around. At this point, you guys, I was, I was so uh, frustrated to the point where I didn't even want to turn the camera back on. It was just nothing was going right. I finally figured it out. So, well, not, I didn't figure it out. I had, 
Johnny said, Dad, give Victor a call. Let's see what's going on. See if maybe he knows what's going on. Now, the whole time I knew what was going on. But anyways, so I gave him a call and I said, hey, Victor, car's not firing up. I don't know what's going on. It's just all I did was just put a new check valve in. And uh, that's all I did. And at first I thought, I, I said to him, I, I checked the fuse. And the fuse is going because the pumps, you can hear the pumps going. So I'm like, man, is this, he goes, did you check the lines or did you mix them up? And I'm like, no, there's no way I mixed them up because I made sure they like, they're separated from each other and uh, there's no way. And uh, I was just being stubborn. I kind of knew, but I'm like, you know what? There's no way. I just, I can't be wrong on this one. Yeah, I was pretty, I was pretty wrong. And I mixed the lines up. They must have, uh, they must have uh, crisscrossed when I was fooling around with the AN lines and the main lines must have. But as soon as I plugged it in, it just fired up instantly, you guys, and then away we go. Now, so far, it's uh, I drove it home and there's no issues. The fuel pressure is just perfect and it's just where exactly where I want it. Let me show you guys, okay? All right, so since we're on the subject of like gauges and meters, and I just can't emphasize how important it is to have the proper or the right gauges in your car. For my instance, going down the Calgary, I knew right away because the fuel pressure wasn't at where it's supposed to be. It should be hovering around at idle. I think it's around 50. And then when you're in boost, depends on how much boost, uh, it calls for between 70 to up to almost 85, 90. It would just sit at 60 and I knew something was wrong. I was easy, I was able to pinpoint where this, uh, the problem is. The other thing, if it wasn't for the kink line, it could be my secondary fuel pump. So it's with the proper gauge, it was, uh, allowed me to diagnose uh, the problem. And that's why it's pretty more imp important, to, right, to have the, the right gauge. And same thing as your fuel ratio, uh, uh, the AFR, uh, it should be rough in the 14. But if you don't have that, you don't know if your cars are just not running right or not. But that's a clear indication that something's wrong or it's running rich or running uh, lean. And lean is probably the worst you want to go for. You can do a lot of damage to your engine. So I can't emphasize how important it is to get the right gauges you guys all right you guys so in my car i obviously i run the cob access port i do really like it because it just gives me a uh, real-time display of all my gauges and everything let's uh fire it up here <laughs> by the way wow it's firing up the gtr is awesome it gives me all these temperatures and stuff like that and that's just the basics uh but these are the ones that are really important. Your air fuel ratio uh, for for the GTR. There's two banks, right? So we're going to be bank one, bank two, and of course my fuel pressure. And the fuel pressure is important because right now when we fired up, we had 30 psi. But yeah, that's a clear indication of uh, when I started up and stuff like that. Um, how much fuel I'm getting delivered to the engine, and that's how I was able to pinpoint and. Again, knock. Knock is important. And of course, your boost left and right if you're the health, shows you the health of your, uh, my turbos. So if you're having some problems or a boost leak or whatever, there's a clear indication we'll know right away. I also have another gauge, but just don't have enough here. It's for my um, E85 sensor, but that's when I fill it up and I just know exactly how much I have. But yeah, the car is just running fantastic now. No more kink lines. I was kind of worried that it was the secondary fuel pump was going because every time I give it gas, it just wasn't going. But it only acted up when it's starting to get hot. So maybe it is. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, today's not very hot. So if it is, we might have to pull the fuel basket out and change that uh, fuel pump if it uh, keeps uh, having the same issue. But so far, I drove it home. No issues, you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, this week's vlog. Uh, more exciting things to come i know this one's not that exciting but it's just some regular maintenance that need to be done and i uh, just wanted to share with you guys that how important to have the right gauges we'll see you guys next week and uh we'll see you next time see ya so there's the future of full throttle thanks for sticking to the end of the vlog today guys and this is the uh, big surprise coming up soon thanks again guys